In today's video, something totally different. We're going to paint a sardine. <laughs> hey friends, what's up? Welcome back. My name is Shada Campbell and around here we get creative together. And we've been getting creative together for quite a few years now. This spring, the YouTube channel will turn seven or eight years old. Hmm, should have counted that out before. Eight years old, I think. <laughs> And so we are always painting lots and lots of flowers, but this year I still wanna paint loads of flowers. But since I'm putting out more content now, two, three, even four videos a week, so make sure you're subscribed, turn your notifications on so you're not missing anything. Since I'm doing more videos, I can experiment a little bit more. And frankly, I feel very creative right now, even though I have a bit of the winter lull, blahs. I do feel like trying new things generally. So today, a sardine, cause why not? Because uh, I am doing a lot of pattern in my Bujo, my bullet journal. And I think just having these supplies right here to get playful with patterns, it's inspired me to kind of get a little more playful with my other art and just try more mixed media and have a bit of fun. So to paint a sardine, just grab whatever you have, your watercolors, your gouache, your pencil crayons, your brush markers, and we're going to work with layers and just have fun with this guy. And you kind of want to do this oval shape for the, for the fish. He's long, he's grumpy looking, <laughs> or he's going to be right now, he's just an oval. And then we're going to do two triangles at the back for his fins, little fin up top maybe a teeny one there. He's got like an eye over here, circle, and like a bit of a grumpy mouth. And then there's going to be, you know, all these speckles and designs and shimmer, and that's what we have to build up. That's what we have to create, and we're gonna have a lot of fun doing it. So now that our little messy sardine is in place here, his mouth looks insane. <laughs> I just want to get rid of some of these pencil lines because with watercolor, you will see all of the pencil even after you paint typically because watercolors are, you know, transparent. They tend to be. So let's get a nice big brush here. This is a number eight. You could use a number 10, whatever. I do have a bit of a messy palette, but we're going to make it work. And I'm going to grab some gray and all we really need to do with our little, or was that black that I grabbed? That's okay. We'll mix in some blue, some purple, some white, what have you, <laughs> and lots of water, of course. And we will, yeah, I might need a little blue on there. That's pretty. And he is going to be darkest up here. Now don't go too dark because you want to layer, 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 and we're gonna have a lot of fun layering. So we want to be able to build up color with our brush pens, with our colored pencils. And you can see, I basically did this line of paint up here, and now I'm using a wet cloth, and I'm just blending that color out. Doesn't have to be perfect. I want a little bit more blue in there. Maybe just release a little like that. That's kind of pretty. And then ba, ba, ba. I'm gonna make his fins purple. Why not? You could have purple, or not his, his tail fin, I guess. You could have a purple tail fin, good sir. And why don't you just have a purple-ish, grayish purple little top fin up there too. And I'm just doing kind of little wispy, but if it just looks blurry and messy like my back fin here, don't worry about it, because we're gonna do lots of stuff later stuff we're gonna do lots of layering and we're gonna make it make it look really pretty by the time we add all the brush pen the colored pencil if this is a little like messy a little a little whoa that's not gonna matter it's not gonna matter by the time you layer everything up and if you have gone too dark consider adding a little water that uh, is a great way to begin lifting or it can just create like a really cool ooh that's pretty that can just help create some beautiful interesting colorations on your 
fish. Oh, that's called a bloom, by the way, a bloom. And the blooms, I like to sometimes use them to help me lift. Lifting just is kind of like the erasing of the watercolor world. There we go. Okay, awesome. Now, I'm going to, uh, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna put a little white gouache. I have to wait for him to dry. I have to do that. So I'm gonna put a little white gouache over here in my gouache palette. And I just wanna give a fun, I just wanna give a border. Like I wanna paint, and there is some blue already in there. And with gouache, you just wanna add a whole lot of water. Gouache is very opaque, so there is absolutely no reason to use it right out of the tube because you will just waste it. And you can see it's going on so, so, so watery and it still will cover anything it comes in contact with. So while I'm waiting for Mr. Weird Sardine to dry, I just want to add some color to the rest of the page. And I'm just gonna go around and like do a very messy, loose color. I want it to have that, that messy look, like a messy edge. And then the color like just doesn't quite reach the sardine in the middle and that's fine. You can work with gouache like watercolor where if you need to move it on the page like I'm doing here, you can. And you can see it's much, it becomes very transparent. It, it, it basically functions exactly like watercolor if you add enough water. But I just love how wonderfully opaque it is. And it looks great for something like this where we just wanna basically lay down a block of color and have this nice sketchbook page where Mr. Sardine has a bit of color highlighting him and making him look like a cool guy. Once we're, this is, we're just doing this today because it's something different. I just felt like doing something unique, something that I wouldn't normally do. And it's a great way to practice uh, your mixed media. So, I mean, using different mediums together Mediums being basically your art supplies, like your gouache, your watercolor, your pens, your brush pens, your pencil crayons. Using all that stuff together is a unique skill. And knowing how to layer and how to do that is a skill set. So that's something we're practicing today. And we're just practicing loosening up a bit and not taking things so seriously. That is something I always need a bit of practice with, if you know what I mean. So there he's got like a nice blue border around him and he is beginning to dry, which is awesome. Okay, I just grabbed the hair dryer so that I could be done with that and it is totally dry now so we can move along and we're not gonna use the paint anymore. We're done with you. And we can just sort of start to think about what we would like to use to layer. So I'm thinking blues and I've got some great purples and blues here with my colored pencils. Even green could work. Like I said, you're practicing. It's a skill to build up these colors and use these mixed medias, to mix these medias. Uh, I have some new Le Pens in nice blue colors. That could work. Of course, I have some Copic markers here as well. I'll definitely need a black brush pen, um, like this gr warm, dark gray would probably be awesome. Yeah. Maybe even using like a periwinkle sort of blue, I could see working quite well. I think I blew away my clothes. <sighs> there it is. <laughs> okay. Let's get started. I think I'll begin, well, I'm just gonna use my fine liner and we're gonna give him his eye. Remember, this does not have to be perfect. You're doing like a fun illustration. 
And then I also want to use this to do some lines for the fins. So like the tail fin. Just gonna make the movements really quick because I think that makes the, the line that I really need. There, and then I wanna start layering in some other stuff. How about the teal sort of low pen color? Yeah, that looks good layered in there. Cool. I'm kind of making like a scribbly illustrative fin for him. <laughs> and then I want to start doing some dotting. So I think, okay, let's start with a color that's close to him and then we can layer in some more. So. That's cool. I'm going to make the spots bigger towards the top, and then they're gonna get smaller as we come down here. This is one of those projects that will just make you feel like a kid again. I'm actually developing a course right now. I can't say a lot about it at the moment, um, but I will have lots of good positive news about it soon. But anyways, I'm developing this course and it's all about just filling a sketchbook, which is a tough thing to do because the blank page is really scary. And so in this course, it's all these great prompts and we work together to um, basically take you from someone who doesn't draw at all um, to someone who, you know, has a full sketchbook that you can be like, look at my sketchbook. You go draw at coffee shops and be like, <laughs> look in, looky here but it's all these really creative, fun exercises that kind of take the pressure off and that aren't about the end goal. They're not about making a pretty picture. They're about enjoying the process and tapping into like how we felt as kids when we did stuff like this. And I mean, putting spots on a sardine, could there be anything more joyful? <laughs> I love the way these colors are blending together. I thought I was gonna use black for this, but now I'm like, no way, man, black is boring. Like, if anything, I should grab that forest green and see what that looks like, because that would that could look really interesting. So I've got a dark forest green copic here. Let's just see. How do you layer? Layer some big green splotchy splotches in there. And of course, some little dots too. I think the paper is still like a little bit wet in some areas, but I'm not mad at that because it just allows the marker to blend a little bit, like really naturally. And I think that looks kind of cool. Hmm, what else? What about like a little hint of yellow even, kind of on the, on the underbelly? That kind of works, that's kind of cool. I don't know. I'm not like overly familiar with how sardines look and their colorations. So I'm definitely just experimenting here. I was looking at Google images and I was like, okay, remember, remember the sardine. <laughs> Let's put some pink in his tail. It's a nice warmth to Mr. Friendly Sardine here. And I haven't done a lot with pencil crayons and I think, you know, that's fine, but they do allow me to be kind of really precise. I'm gonna give him like a, an end to his tail and his fin with the pencil crayon. I think that looks cool. Yeah, that's fun. And I'm going to do some little spots too, because with the pencil, with the colored pencil, you can be so light. You know, you can achieve 
a little bit more precision. And definitely a lighter value than you can with a brush pen. So let's just do some dots. None of that really matters, except that I can just go really, really light. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> So cool. There you go, buddy. You're looking handsome. Okay, and then I'm a little scared of his mouth here. I did do a quick pencil sketch and I just couldn't quite get the mouth looking like right. But you know what? It doesn't doesn't matter. That's what I would tell you. If you were here and you were like, I'm not going to get the mouth right. I'd be like, it doesn't, nobody, it doesn't matter. Let's give him some little gills here. And then there's his mouth. <laughs> it's just a line. <laughs> That's all we've done. And that'll, that'll do. I'm going to put some more yellow around his eye. Make his eye kind of interesting. Mm. I'm going to give him a pink spot here under his mouth. That's kind of cool. And back here, add some pink on his, I don't know what that is, <laughs> near his tail. And I think I'm pretty happy with that. Maybe a little bit of gray as well around the eye. There we go. And I think all I want to do is write sardine or something silly across the bottom. This is the part where I start to worry that I'm going to spell it wrong because I tend to do that. There's just something about filming. I think the pressure to not make a dumb mistake is so high that I inevitably make a dumb mistake. <laughs> Pressure's really not that high. <laughs> oh, please don't let me look silly in front of everybody. <laughs> sardine. You look cool, Sardine. You look great. You've got a great color palette here. You're beautiful. I like this red with all the other colors. I know it's like, who is she? Like she loves color now. <laughs> and I do have this red Le Pen. Let's see if it, I was just gonna do like a little border. I don't know if that's anything. Filming this on Friday, you'll be watching it on Saturday and I'm gearing up for a weekend of minus 20 with a two year old. It's like, what do you, what do you do all weekend? <laughs> I think we're gonna try to find a family swim, maybe go swimming. And I've, I do prep uh, activities and stuff, but sometimes it's like I prepped an activity and then that was five minutes <laughs> that we spent doing that painting or Play-Doh or you know, whatever, I'm sure. Many of you will relate. <laughs> okay, sardine, sardine is done. I love this, this was fun to do. And I'm sure uh, you can see that it would be also fun to like add some layers, some textures to the background. I think I like him without, but that would certainly be a possibility. So there's no limit to what you can do here. And, um, yeah, I'm very happy with this. Let me know if you'd like to see more stuff like this because this is definitely different for me. But I think if you're filling the sketchbook and you're trying new things and you're really just kind of in that phase of searching with your art, where it, a phase which I hope to always be in, this is just one of those great little exercises that can build your confidence, help you get to know your supplies a little bit better and tap into that kind of inner child that's just like, art is fun and you have no fear. All right, thanks for hanging out, guys. Remember, if you're looking for more Shada content, I do have a couple of e-courses. You can find them on my website, shadacampbell.com, or go right to shadacampbellcourses.com. Those are great um, learning materials. They're very well-priced, 
And if you're getting into watercolor or floral illustration, they can help you get to a place where you're very confident and, and feeling really good about, about your work. So I will see you soon. I will see you next week with a new tutorial. Remember I'm posting two, three times a week right now. So make sure you're subscribed with notifications on so you don't miss anything and head over to Patreon. I got a lot to say apparently. Head over to Patreon because I have a little sardine coloring page that can help you um, kind of jump in and start using all those different supplies if you just don't want to draw the sardines. All right, patreon.com slash Shada Campbell. It's a great way to support this channel and you get bonus content every week, like a fun sardine coloring page. Thanks for watching guys. See you soon.